Hi, I'm Nigel, and this is Nigel Goes to Space. It's always great to get your suggestions as to what to include on these shows. And I've heard from Steve O'Canuck, who says you should make one on stars. From a kid, we were taught that they were shaped like actual stars. A bit like this one, I guess you mean, Steve-O. Uh, but I figured out as I grew older that they weren't. I honestly don't know how big or what shape stars are. Stars are really big, to answer the first part of your question. There can be millions of kilometres or even billions of kilometres across for the really large ones. But when it comes to shape, most of them are the same. They're not exciting like that star I've just showed you. They're much more like this orange. They are spherical. And if, when you see pictures of our sun, you can see that the sun is round. Most stars are like the sun. And the reason is they're made out of gas. And gas is quite soft and squidgy. It's not solid and gravity pulls it in from all directions. And because it's pulling in from all directions equally, you end up with a sphere. But not all stars are spherical. Some are a bit different. If you could get close up to the star Regulus in the constellation of Leo the Lion, you would find it look much more like this tangerine. And the reason is that Regulus is spinning very, very, very rapidly. Now our sun turns around once in about a month, Regulus goes around in less than a day. It's going so fast that the regions around its equator are being flung outwards and it assumes this tangerine shape. In fact, we can work out that if Regulus spun even a little bit faster, it would actually spin apart and destroy itself. So stars can be flattened if they spin fast. If you look at another bright star, Spica, in the constellation of Virgo, the Virgin, you'll see its star is very different. Spica is actually two stars, and if you looked at those two stars close together, you'd see that they're actually egg-shaped. Uh, so you've got two stars close to each other, they're orbiting around each other. And what's happening here is that the gravity of each star and the other is not only making them go around in orbit, but it's pulling out the gas in one star to be nearer to the other star. So Spica consists of two egg-shaped stars going around with the points of the eggs pointing towards each other. And in an extreme case, if you have a star which is close to a companion with even more powerful gravity, and the thing with the most powerful gravity in the universe is a black hole, the star we call Cygnus X1 is orbiting around a black hole. If you get close to Cygnus X1, it would look like this. Yes, a pear-shaped star, unlikely as it sounds. The black hole is here. This is the poor unfortunate star. The black hole is pulling the gas from the star out like this, so powerfully that the gas ends up going into the black hole. So if you can see Cygnus X1 close up, you will see this pair apparently going around and around the black hole and this gas is being pulled in. So those are the basic shapes of stars. They can be a sphere, completely round. They can be like a tangerine if they're spinning rapidly or gravity can stretch them out into an egg shape or even a pear shape. Uh, but one thing we know so far, we haven't discovered a star that looks anything like that. <laughs> to find out more about the universe, do keep tuning in to the Naked Science channel, subscribe to the channel, uh, send me your questions, and do keep following Nigel Goes to Space.